like unless he provokes, yeah, yeah. then he's a madman. But if, yeah. he, if you just leave him him alone, yeah. he's fine. That's yeah. why I like provoking him because <laughs> 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 he, he knows what he's doing. The camera, the camera, you know what it is? Because the camera's on. So I just dropped my app www.chizzolift.com online personal training you got custom meal plans custom training plans with training plans you got a video showing you how to do all your exercises uh, you could log in your sets your reps the weights you use and literally every month I changed up your plan in the description you got a code best you 20 at the moment you can use that to get a 20% discount for life new episode featuring safe home Lewis we got Gabriel Sion yeah, make sure you lock in, man. Please like, subscribe, share it. If you want the channel to grow, please do that for me. Much appreciated. Also, locks each and every Sunday. Calm down. I'm there. Gabriel passes by. Marvin, the, the whole gang. Come hang with us. See you there. What's good, though, man? Says, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, man. You get Thanks, me, Mr. Man. Mentivity. <laughs> you get me? One third of it. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. yeah, one third of it. You know what I mean? Tyson's part of the team in it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah Tyson and Leon yeah yeah, so. yeah 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 man how are you man I'm I good see, man I, I see you the past year rattling the police I love it man standards <laughs> gotta be done <laughs> <laughs> I love it we're standing up for the youth them yeah and even I see uh, the other day the football players man that mm. used to coach I was like right Mm. It's big seeing them on it, doing well in the Premiership, like Sancho and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time, man. Twenty-three yeah. years of coaching. And That's mad. Working in the community, man. Since That's sixteen, mad. so yeah, yeah. Twenty-three years. It's been a long time, but it's got to be done. Someone's got to do it. Yeah, There's a lot of people doing it, but it's good to be spotlighted, you know, yeah. for it. So, no, nah, that's, that's a good look, good. man. That's mm. a good look. That's a good look. And now it gives, especially like the younger, the younger boys, something to look forward to because they they've seen. Two people that are doing really well mm. at the England level yeah. that have come by you first. Yeah. So now when they're coming to training, you could say to them, "Rah, back in the these lot used to they used to put the extra work in training. They used to do this. They used to do that. That yeah. could be you. And like, it's not like you saying that could be you. Like, like in a way that, oh, it's not been done before. Mm. It's like that could be you that I've seen it done before. I've yeah. seen the hard work put in." And you just literally just need to follow the same path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because a lot of kids don't realise that, especially growing up where we grew up, grew up like where we're just talking about now that how we've all moved away from the area and all of that. Yeah. A lot of kids don't realise that there's more outside of there. Like a lot will fall into certain traps and mm. this early in those key years where if they just decided to focus, let's say like five, six years hardcore on yeah. this training, it could be the next Sancho. That's it. It literally is that. Yeah. It, it is that, but you need people in the community that they trust and they believe in and that we believe in them and show them that, you know, we love them and we want to support them on their, yeah. their journey of you know, progress. But yeah. we need more people in the community doing that. And yeah. that's the issue is that a lot of young people don't have that support. You know, they want to yeah. do the things that they want to do, but they don't have people that have actually done it, that yeah. had the experience. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's so important to give back. And that's what I needed. Yeah. If I didn't have Abs, which was my mentor, yeah. who got me involved in football at Red Lion from a yeah. young age, you know, he grew up on the Glebe estate. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today because yeah. he, he inspired me to be a mentor, yeah. to coach, to do yeah. all the things I'm doing. So, yeah, it's important, man. Back in the day, like, you, you lost area, like, uh, come to check Tyson, and I remember the first <laughs> time I ever walked to Owlsby. I was like, what the hell is this place? And you lot had people like... Uh, like in in college a year above me, mm. like uh, Buck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's joke. Like when everyone sees Buck now and they see him like with gigs and that, and they see him online and they think, oh, he's like a, a joker and all of that, and mm. always busting joke and this, that, that. And I'm like, oh, Buck. I knew him as the <laughs> football man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was that guy who I thought was gonna go all the way to the Premiership. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? But. That's a different story. What happened in college days, you know? <laughs> and I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get him on this soon. Yeah. But it's like you lot's area. I just remember like there was a lot of talented guys in college days mm. that could have probably made it. Yeah. And it's back to what you said, not having that little bit of guidance. Yeah. That someone to give them that extra push because you know in in that era you had like a lot of these man rep these ends mm. these man rep that end. Yeah. And in especially like our college, it was like a split between Brixton and Peckham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of Woolworth Road, the ones nearer to 
this side will be Peckham. Yeah. The ones nearer to the Kennetton bunch yeah, will be Brixton. Will be Brixton. <laughs> I was like, you know how tap that is? Yeah. Then everyone's all in the same Northern line going to college. <laughs> Best of mates. College finishes on the weekend. Yeah. You see your guys with their guys. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's foolishness because on Monday, it was besties again. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. People don't realise how difficult it was. Yeah. It was a good community though. But yeah. So much talent there. Like, yeah. not even just like football, just yeah. in terms of intelligence and academia. Like, there was so much there. Yeah. You know, Tiny Temper grew up on the Elves Bristol. Yeah. There's so many people, like Reese yeah. Nelson. Yeah. You know, there's so much talent there. But yeah. just harnessing that and getting yeah. that opportunity and a lot of people, especially football, football yeah. was a white man's game, still is. Yeah. Back then, but it's about who you knew. And you lot was, you lot was close to further down the road, Millwall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, imagine it was a madness. You couldn't go around there. <laughs> you couldn't go person. around there. Combat 18, all those yeah. ultra... Nah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. Like, yeah. like Ilderton Road and all that. Just yeah. Because I, I know from back in them days, like, couple men I went to school with, like, we couldn't go visit them. So, like, mm. after school, like, you know, like, certain times, yeah, a few men have gone there and said, right, he got chased down. And I was <laughs> like... And people don't realise how that late 90s, early 2000s, that was real in those areas. Like, now, you could go there and yeah. it's calm. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's been mixed and blended. But back then, listen, I used to get chased every week. I, I played for Red Lion in Surrey Keys. <laughs> and I used to I used to ride to football sometimes. I'd get the bus. I used to be chased out by groups of white boys like yeah. every week. And yeah. I risked my life every week just to play ball. Because yeah. I had a mentor, a coach who was black and he wanted to support mm. me. And I was like, I want to be there. Yeah. So I literally would like, I remember one time I was running away from these groups of boys. There was nowhere for me to go. And the 381 driver must have saw a yeah. black guy. He stopped the bus in the middle of the road to get on now. And literally, I jumped on, closed the doors, saved my life. I'm telling you, <laughs> saved my life. So it was mad. Every week was yeah. like that. So you had your beef in your own area. Yeah. And you go to Bermondsey. <laughs> and then it was just like, White yeah, yeah, it's like mad. Yeah. Proper mad. What do you think changed over, let's say, like the past 15 years in those areas that it just kind of just died down? Because the, the same people mm. probably still live there. Mm. But what do you think has made the difference where they're not out there doing a man that's chasing down. You know what? I think a lot of them moved out. You, a lot of those people moved out yeah. to Kent, to Elton as well. So again, that, yeah, that Elton, moved the problem. Yeah, Elton, back in the yeah. day, you know what? Stephen yeah. Lawrence and all that as well. Yeah. But it was different, you know, going out to Elton, back in the day, you knew you, you were under pressure. Like, I remember yeah. going to play ball in Tunbridge Wells and they were yeah. like, you guys in the right place? I'm like, yeah, yeah we're here playing football. Yeah. Now we think you're in the wrong place. Yeah. And those were adults. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was mad and I was only at 18. Yeah. But for me, I think, What's happened now is that there's less, obviously, white versus black beef in that respect, yeah. whereby everybody's now in the same pot. Mm. Everyone's struggling to, to make life, you know, a success and money, and yeah. everyone's just trying to make it. So now everybody's just grouping together, yeah. whereby now people are just fighting each other, and especially young black boys, unfortunately, yeah. in the areas that you said, Ellsbury Estate, yeah. Brandon Estate, mm. Zone 2, Moscow 17, like, we yeah. know that beef's going on. But yeah. before, it used to be, Peckham versus Brixton. Yeah. Now you've got Woolworth, you've got Moscow 17, yeah. you've got AY, like it's just yeah. all these little groups in these areas yeah. and you, you can't got, even you go You've got the ones from Kennington as well. Yeah, it's mad. Well, back in the day, all, that would have been like one yeah. area together. Yeah, it was yeah. like whole boroughs, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was yeah. whole boroughs. But yeah. now, it's that you can't even go from the Ellsbury Estate to go to the Woolworth Road or go from Woolworth Road to Old Kent Road. So that's mad. It's, it's, it's a madness for young yeah. people as well and trying to navigate that. Like a lot of adults don't understand it. Yeah, because they haven't lived it, they haven't yeah. seen it, and you know I've lost twelve young people in ten years. Yeah, you know to to youth violence and yeah. violence in general, like mm. one shooting, eleven stabbing. So we've got a major issue, man. What exactly is it you do? So I've done a bit of research. I'm assuming your um, mentoring seems the main mm -hmm. theme of what you're doing. Yeah, and um, in regards to that, I saw the title being Bain, mm -hmm. okay, which stands for Black and Ethnic um, Minorities. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now. Do you feel, with the work you do, would you say that you're working, because of where you are, would you say you're working predominantly black males? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and what makes you, what makes you feel that you're qualified Me? to be able to do this mentoring? Because um, I've seen a lot of people mm. do mentoring. Yeah. And um, I often ask myself, how, how do they, what makes them think they're qualified enough? Mm. There isn't a degree to do mentoring, first yeah. of all. Yeah. Okay. That's the first thing I always ask is, what's making them think they're qualified enough? And the second thing is, why do you care? Mm. And that's 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 an important question I'm, I want to ask you. So yeah. the first thing is, um, 
well done for what you do, because mm. I've, I've done enough research to figure out what you do. Mm. Um, well done with the Goldman Sachs collab. Mm. Okay. Um, but I just want to know is what makes you feel that you're qualified? Yeah. Okay, because there's plenty of people out there doing mentoring. It yeah. almost seems like it's the, at one point we'd call it the new PT. Mm. That seems like a lot of black males who um, maybe fall off the wayside yeah. or maybe realise that what they were trying to do isn't working. So they seem to think that this is the avenue to go. Yeah. So I'm asking you is, um, why are you so passionate about it is the first thing. Yeah. And um, what makes you think you're qualified to actually speak to these young kids? As you said, um, I think you said 10 or 12 young boys have, 12. have passed yeah. away yeah. during the time that you've been doing mentivity. How long have you actually been doing it now? Mentivity has been six years in January. It'll be six years in January. But okay. I'll, I'll go why I'm so passionate. I think yeah. to start and then go back from that. Yeah. reason why I'm so passionate because this is my experience in life. You know, okay. like For me, I nearly went down the wrong road so many times. Mm -hmm. and I know the difficulties that I faced growing up on the council estate and how it made me feel you know my, my father and my, my mum they separated when I was eight and okay. that was really the start of the problem for me because okay. I didn't have anybody older than me I'm the oldest of seven mm -hmm. so there was no one really supporting me I was expected to be the man, the man. of the house you know yeah. and yeah. like literally mm -hmm. oh yeah. you should know better you, mm -hmm. you're leading by example mm -hmm. and all these mm -hmm. different things so mm -hmm. it was difficult for me in that respect because I didn't have anybody to kind of guide me yeah. so um the passion comes from the experience and also just knowing how this world is very, very cold for young, for young black boys. You know, oh, yeah. Stephen Lawrence dying, you know, being killed when I was 10. Mm -hmm. I really quickly realised as a black man, mm -hmm. this is the difficulties that we face. Mm -hmm. And in education as well, being told that you're going to go to prison, that you're not mm -hmm. going to amount to things. And it's that whole experience, but also just really understanding that by giving time to some people, mm -hmm. which people did to me, it allowed me to progress, you know, okay. and give me that support. And it wasn't just black men. There was white men that came into my community to coach me, mm -hmm. do different things and broaden my horizons. And I'm so passionate about it because I can see the power of sport or any positive activity mm -hmm. for young people to help them navigate. And that's why mentivity is really my life's work. And I'm so passionate about it. What makes you qualified? Again, yes, it's the experience. That's, yeah. What makes okay. me experience is the mm -hmm. experience. It's 23 years. like. I've been at very critical junctures in my life where it's okay. like, right, it's prison progression or it's death. Mm -hmm. Literally, whereby I know that I can't go to university because I need to have this behind me or that qualification. Mm -hmm. So it's therefore thinking, right, I'm with my brethren who I grew up with, who were Peckham boys back in mm -hmm. the day. And it's that right, they're getting more involved in certain things and it seems like easy money. Mm -hmm. And for me, at that point, it was that, right, do I follow these guys mm -hmm. and try and make easy money? But I saw what happened to a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, whereby stabbings and things like that. And I'm like, I don't want that life for me because yeah. I'm 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 an all or nothing person. Like Cheers, so obviously I'm assuming the two of you know each other outside of the setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've, so I've known Sace I've known Sace like like from college. Because yeah. me me, Use and his his younger brother Tyson, mm -hmm. we were all in the same class. Mm. Yeah. So like we was literally with each other. How did, how did you how did your two paths cross? So, so my brother. His brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so okay. I went to SFX. Yeah, so he was he there before us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So through, he, he was there before us. His brother was in my class. I used to go to their house time to time. So I met him, his other brother, who's yeah, just below in Romel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, his younger sister, Kylie, she's living around the corner. Mm -hmm. So she was a year below us. So like, I basically know like the whole family. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like yeah, even sure. the younger ones, I ain't seen them since. Yeah, they're big women. Yeah, now. yeah, I know. <laughs> it's funny. So big women. So like we've known each other like yeah, twenty years. Yeah, it's yeah, been that years. long. Yeah. And, and what would you say is the breakdown with these young boys? I know there's so many different reasons, but I said you've been doing it six years, but I'm assuming you've been mentoring way past. Oh no, twenty three years I've been yeah. in the community. Yeah, yeah exactly. Six years but I guess mentality. Mentality, yeah. That's so my own thing. So that's yeah. that's why because I experienced two redundancies. I got to the point I was fed up. You know mm. what I mean? Working for other people mm -hmm. and having minimal impact, whereby. If I can do things my way, I know I can impact and do things because I'm passionate about this young person. If I need to go to their house at 12 mm -hmm. o'clock at night and mm -hmm. sit down and speak to their parents, I can do that. Yeah. Whereas if I'm on the clock with another organisation, like mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that because I'm getting paid, but yeah. I'm passionate about this, so I'm going to do that and put the effort in because I know what it can do for me and mm -hmm. what it has done for me mm -hmm. through football and through education. So I just see how many young people I've impacted in yeah. my community. When I walk down Peckham mm -hmm. and I walk down Wharf Road, like I will get stopped by someone, yeah. you know, who might be 25, 26. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, say, what's going on, man? You remember what you told me? Yeah, I did this. Yeah. Or it might be the other side. I should have listened to you, mm -hmm. you know, because now I came out of prison. I find it difficult. You were right. And it's being that presence in the community is so, mm -hmm. so important because you can bring people together mm -hmm. and actually actually stop things from happening in the community yeah. where, like negativity like violence and things like that because I can broker conversations between people that might not want to talk 
and mm-hmm. keep them away from negativity as well. So for me, it's just about really just pushing and, and being that person. You know, I don't do it for accolades or nothing like that. I just and do it because it's right. And from your experience, where would you say the breakdown is? Because for instance, you said that um, at eight, your mum and dad split, mm. okay? And you say that's for you probably where maybe the breakdown started for you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think when we use experiences, we can only talk for ourselves. Of course. So I can't talk for every person that's in crime or killing someone. And the same way yeah. you can't, but with your 23 years of experience in the community and what you experienced yourself, mm. if you had to pin it down to maybe one or two things, what would you say the breakdown is? Because there's some women who are going to be watching who have got, who've got sons, mm. who are growing up 10, 12, 11, 13, in that age group where, but where would you say the breakdown starts? As in where, where do we need to catch them mm. if there is a point before it gets too far? Because I've done mentoring myself and I still do. Mm. And I don't like being pessimistic or being defeatist but I think some some boys have just lost cases yeah, yeah. you're just wasting your resources yeah. for some of them it's just it's too far gone especially when there's deaths already honest. people have been robbed there's, it gets to the point when you can't there's nothing you can do yeah. but I'm asking you where if there is a, a catch point mm-hmm. where would you say where does the breakdown begin where, where moms can watch this and dads and say you know what let me look at the signs from now mm-hmm. maybe my son's six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. but this is what you've seen in your experience so this, this might not be for everyone but if you, from what you've done for 23 years mm. where would you say the breakdown is starting so the, i think there's two critical points with young black boys in particular between four and nine is a key part because it's about the foundation a lot of these young black boys that we have now don't know their history don't know anything about themselves and i'm not talking about ancient egypt things like mm. that i'm talking about recent history you know even mm. in the 70s 80s people that were prominent in a society and communities giving back and doing things and actually trying to push the black British experience and the narrative, you know, politically. And I think that's important. We need to educate our young people from a standpoint so they have a foundation to build upon so they feel proud. There's no pride in our young black boys, a lot of them, because they don't know who they are. So by not knowing who they are, when they go into that system of education, they become lost. You have something in in America called the fourth grade syndrome, and the same thing here, whereby young black boys, when they go into education, are the most enthusiastic, most academic Mm -hmm. learners. Like They're just on Mm -hmm. education. They want to learn. They're bubbly. But over a period of four years, what you see is a kind of indoctrination in terms of white education now making them feel inferior. Mm -hmm. And they get to the point where they feel lost. They're not getting a lot of support from their teachers, who are predominantly white. There are not enough black men in education as well, predominantly women in primary school education. And they just become indoctrinated and actually feel inferior. And that's through education first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Now we've got social media. All they see is white men in positive kind of aspects of life. Mm-hmm. Black men, you look, you go Google, put in gangs, black people come up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of negativity, Snapchat, all this stuff is out yeah. there. And they become indoctrinated and they become cold to the world because the world's cold to them. So I think four to nine is a very, very key point. And then we have from year nine. Year nine is a weird... Age. Yeah, so it's a switch yeah. age. 13 yeah. to 14. Yeah. So mm. what happens it's is funny that you say that. Yeah. Carry on. What carry happens on. is that yeah. you go into year seven, you don't have that kind of support. You, you're at the top of the school, you go into secondary school, you're at the bottom of the school. Mm-hmm. Now you've got to figure it out. A lot of pressures. Seven, year seven, year eight, so 11 to 13, you're still think you're kind of a young kid, mm-hmm. like are you. But when you go into year nine, you're like in a critical kind of juncture where mm-hmm. it's like, am I still young or am I old? Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are acting out because they've not had that support. A mm-hmm. lot, no pastoral support in education nothing to do in terms of youth clubs mm-hmm. and activities and things like that so they actually then gravitate towards the negativity and it becomes a kind of self-fulfilling negative prophecy mm-hmm. where young people see what's around them i can't get out of here i can't get out of the Ellsby estate mm-hmm. or or uh, north peckham estate mm-hmm. or yellow brick this is what i've got to do so what made you what made you actually i'm assuming that you've got into some kind of trouble mm-hmm. at some point growing up. Mm. And what was the motivation or what was the deciding factor that led you down that path? So I'm thinking since you, I'm assuming you're, you're a man, mm-hmm. you, you're not a, I'm going to say you're not a follower. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what what was it about gangs mm. that made you want to, not, let me say group of friends. Mm-hmm. I like to call them a group of friends. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think we join, well, I can't talk for everyone. Mm. I didn't join a gang because I wanted badness. I just wanted them as my friends. Yeah, that's it. And then unfortunately, one or two do bad things and then we all kind of, do it too. Yeah. So what? What? Why is it that? Because obviously, Chizzo's from Brixton. Mm. Yeah. Chizzo's always Chizzo's always been a, a follower. He never had his own <laughs> backbone. So <laughs> my thing. Lie. <laughs> so so as I want to know how long you knew Chiz, because I was wondering. <laughs> Chizzo what? No, I was just, uh, what? Wait, wait, so, remember that episode? Actually, we can't even do this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, he chose the, the perfect time to try to make 
about Chisholm was a bad... No, 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 I'm, I'm just wondering, because like, can you take a seat here, please? No, 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 because no, 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 I want to see your facial reaction when I ask this question. Because no, 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 he, he knows you longer than I've known you. Take a seat. No, please, sir. Can no, you no, just... take a seat. No, please. No, no, take a seat. Every, every, every day he's trying to wind me up. No, no, take a seat. No, no, he's always trying, trying to wind me up. We'll both stand here, no problem. Right, we'll stand, we'll stand, we'll stand. We'll stand. <laughs> Keep your legs crossed the same way. Yeah, we'll stand. No, because what I want to know is that, is obviously, you two have crossed paths, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming it's from college, mm -hmm. SFX days, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And I'm assuming that um, you wasn't besties, but you knew of each other. Mm -hmm. You were friends. Yeah. And I'm thinking... He'd already, he'd already left before I got there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my, my yeah. question now is that with the stuff that you got involved in, mm -hmm. and obviously Chizzo's got involved in stuff, and mm. I have as well. And the yeah. question is, is that you're mentoring. Mm. I, I, I'm, I'm mentoring. Whether Chizzo likes it or not, this podcast is a form of... No, this is mentoring. This is why I started this. Yeah. Mm. A lot of yeah. parents... They, they watch yeah, it yeah. and they talk to their boys about what yeah. happens on the podcast. So my question is that all three of us mm. have somehow mm. got involved in, in petty crime or stuff that yep. it's just that I, I ain't gone to prison. Yeah. So I never ever take the moral high ground. Yeah. I just not been to prison. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've done things that I've landed me in. Yeah. Chiz has, and I'm going to make a wild That's assumption it. that yeah. that you have. Uh -huh. So how do we how do we stop that? Yeah. And I'm asking you because you're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you're better qualified than me. You've been mm. doing 23 years. Mm. You're, you're in it. I do it part time. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. why I just want to keep quiet and rather you just, what stops us from doing this? And that's, and that's the question I want because I'm going to look at you and say mm. you're, you're a grown man now. Mm. You seem educated. You seem level headed. You seem mm. correct. And I don't, I don't sense an evil streak in you. No. I don't, because some guys you can just, yeah, you can just you tell. Know. You can and Chiz as well. Chiz, Chiz, like, unless you provoke Chiz. Yeah. yeah. Then he's a madman. But if, yeah. you, if you just leave him him alone, yeah. he's fine. That's yeah. why I like provoking him. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows what he's doing. The camera, the camera, you know what it is? Because the camera's on. He knows what he's doing. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I love it. I love it. So, I love it. Because the camera's so yeah. on. So, so I just want yeah. to. That's what I'm Political asking you. How do we? How did you stop this cycle? Because uh. there's, there's. I'm going to see you two. Same college. Wait, same wait. area. No, you know what? Yeah, it even goes back to the thing like where you said same college, same area. Even in our college, there was still madness where there was tensions between Brixton and Peckham. Mm. And loads of men got kicked out. Yeah. Mm. Loads of guys got kicked out of college. But uh, I would say it goes down to where your circle mm. that you fused with in college, where mm. I was always with his brother, mm. I was always with Yus. So mm. everyone knew that uh, if you see me, you were going to see his brother, you were going to mm. see Yusuf. You're going to see Pierre. There was like a literally mm, yeah. a batch of us who, wherever one man went, we all just kind of stuck together. We didn't really, we didn't even hang with most of the college. We knew yeah. everyone, yeah. but we didn't really hang with everyone else. We just kind of just, it was like the sports studies crew because we were in all the same classes together. Mm. And uh, I think it's just knowing like where you end up with like-minded people from different areas where in them days there, remember being from Brixton, I shouldn't have been going Wolf Road and Peckham. Yeah. But okay. when... Mm -hmm. One, you're known as this is where sports saves us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're known as the athlete. Everyone yep. knew me as like right, free pass, isn't it? Basketball chiz. Yeah. yeah. Their men were known as football Tyson. Yeah. Football. Yeah. So we had like a green light. Yeah. So I could literally, I could be in Wolf Road, Oak Kent Road, because they just mm. like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. My man plays fo football. Oh, my man yep. plays basketball. Yeah. So everyone would be like, ah, oh, yeah, chiz. Yeah, yeah, when's your next game? Blah, blah, mm. blah. So that kind of gave me a pass yeah, a, lead, yeah, a leeway that other men didn't have it did where other men from college like my cousin mm -hmm. he couldn't go there mm -hmm. you know what I mean because yeah. he was known more as oh uh, yeah he had beef with these a lot and mm -hmm. so even like with some people that I'm friends with now for a while I couldn't be as close to them as I wanted mm -hmm. to because they're from the other side yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. and my cousin and my other brethren used to have mm -hmm. madness with them but now they're all cool because mm -hmm. yeah. everyone's grown up and grown out of mm. it and they've seen that everyone's got the same kind of sense of humour and you, you know what you, I mean we you like mentioned something earlier about the whole I call them Montagues and Capulets the, mm. the beef we have back in the day you, you had Peckham and yeah, Brixton yeah, yeah. that would beef but now you've got internal beef yeah, yeah. and I'm going to assume that rest in peace to the guys that, that, you, that have, you've lost during mm. the past 10-12 years my mm. question is is that can I make a wild assumption that some of these beefs were internal meaning mm. like it's not the Brixton Peckham it's Brixton Brixton that. meaning that you've got Someone from maybe from Angel Town beef and someone from Summer Layton or yeah. someone. I know they all do these postcodes. I'm not. Yeah. You, you're, you probably know no, better than I do. It's, it's, it's not even just postcodes now. It's mm. literally like blocks. Like yeah. it could be a road. Yeah. You know what I mean? People just making up. Like Penja got gangs now. I'm yeah. like, Penja. Like yeah. Penja's nowhere. Like what's yeah. going on there? Like, <laughs> but 
it's mad because like with Raheem, Raheem was a boy that I worked with from the age of eight. He was okay. from the Brandon Estate near Kennington. Okay. Uh, and he got shot and killed uh, on the 5th of May, 2018. Now, I've been working with him since the age of eight. Okay. And the beef that he was in was with people that actually went to his school, his pupil referral unit that I was working okay. at, at Seals in Peckham and London Bridge. And they were brethren. And okay. zone two is from Peckham, like Bells Gardens, Yellow mm -hmm. Brick, and then Moscow 17 were from the Brandon. And they know each other. They, mm. they were friends. They went yeah. to loads of schools together. Like, mm. They had a lot of mutual friends. Yeah. Yeah. And that beef got became deadly, you know, mm. because of the music as well. The drill was an influence yeah. because they were taunting people. And now the difference is that we got social media now. Back in the day, mm. we don't have social media. Social yeah. media. Whatever happened in that moment happened in that moment. Yeah. That people no were here like, oh, yeah, 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 so yeah it's got yeah, yeah, in the face. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. You could live another day. But yeah. now you got it on film. A constant memory yeah, coming yeah, back, yeah, coming yeah, back. So you're having to kind of stand up to that shame and that embarrassment and actually now stand up for yourself. And if you can't stand up for yourself, then people just drawing for a knife for protection, mm. first and foremost. But mm. how we stop this, man, it's about ownership. It's really about now taking charge of our communities and actually really getting people to volunteer their time and giving to young people. Like you said, mentoring mm -hmm. is so important. It happens in every facet, every part of life. Like mm. you go into a workplace, as mentioned, mm. happen there, football team, mm -hmm. wherever it may, may be. But we've now got to make it that I'm giving time to your children, your children, mm. you know, and they can see that time as love. Like, you know what, SAIS doesn't, even have to be here mm -hmm. so now he's giving me that time and respect and actually now i'm taking that as you know what that's love and i can actually take on what he's saying and respect him we don't have that now we don't have a community i'll be yeah. real with you we don't have a community okay. people talk about community we don't have a community because everyone's in it for themselves yeah everyone's trying to make money everyone's in survival mode and when you're in survival mode you do whatever you've got to do to survive which means if it means me killing someone that looks like me because i've got to eat mm. and i've got to do this or i've got to make money then I'm going to do that because I'm in survival mode. And that's where when, when you say out. survival mode, so uh, I remember asking one young, one of these young boys I met with in Birmingham when he said, he was 14, 15, he said, mm. yeah, I just need to make money. Yeah. And I sat there and said, why do you need to make money? Because yeah. you're saying survival mode. Yeah. And I'm going to assume that a lot of the reasons why we get involved in crime generally at the beginning is money. Because mm -hmm. it starts off with petty crime. Yeah. I know it's not petty to the person it's happened to, but you, start, you rub a phone yeah. or something. To you, it's maybe when we was kids, it was a laugh. Mm. It, no, not a laugh, but it wasn't. We didn't think of how we didn't think of the repercussions. Of the repercussions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? It was exciting. Yeah. 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 So I'm saying, w from your experience, why do you feel a 14, 15 year old boy is out there trying to make money? And also, to flip the story, a lot of these young boys out there selling drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm I'm gonna make a wild assumption and say that they're getting drugs from the older lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely and 100. do you see that as grooming? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's grooming because that, again, that's a, a negative form of mentoring, isn't it? Because you're exp you're exploiting someone younger than you to hold these drugs, to sell these drugs, because you know that if you do it, you can go to pres prison. This young person might go youth offending or whatever, maybe you might get a second chance, but that's exploitation. Definitely grooming. It's the mm. same way by sending a group of uh, young boys out to rob another group of boys. Like You're exploiting these, gu these guys in their vulnerable nature, but also they want to impress the olders. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. the big brothers, They're you're the dads. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So it's all yeah. about recognition. So yeah. you want to be feel validated by what yeah. people say about you. And we all did, you know what I mean? Like, oh, cool, Sacey, he doesn't have it, or Chisel doesn't have it. You like that reputation. Mm. And that negativity actually is actually really positive for us in the community, even though it's a negative. And you know, and see, see and that's, the, that's the huge part that I have a problem with, is that we glorify... Badness. But it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You know what? You just remind you just remind me remind me of something. So crazy. Like, you know when you was talking about uh, back in the day, what else kind of kept people like me away mm. from certain things? At first, yeah, I would say my area, yeah, apart from basketball, yeah, most of the guys who were like three, four years older than me. Yeah, no offense to them, some of them are bums. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't guys who you wanted to be like. Yeah. You know? So. Like, you know, like growing up in Brixton now and like you're going through different areas and we're meeting people from your ends, people from other ends who were like three, four years older than us. Like, like it was a couple of men who went to my school that like, live around here. And I remember that like, one of them in year, in year 11, when I was in, he was in year 11, I was in year nine. That man had cars and that. Mm. Mm. But we always used to want to learn how to hustle, but not be on badness. Yeah. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So that's one side we wanted to pick up from them, man. Mm. But the ones from my area all they did was drink and smoke and bury them ended up in a madhouse down the road mm. so when you saw that you were like yeah. i don't really want to be like these men mm. so that's where some of us kind of drew back but some men have gone so deep into the grind now with the hustling side of things mm. where 
one man's tried to bump them for food, next mm. man's tried to bump them for money. Yeah. That's where violence come into the game now. Mm. And them not originally wanting to be bad have reacted to show that raw they're yeah. not pushovers or pussies. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. So that's how loads of my brothers end up in jail. Mm. But now a lot of them from that batch now, I'll say everyone apart from one person of badness, mm. where everyone's got like legit jobs like They've gone jail, come out, and they, they've known that they can't get the normal nine to five mm. jobs they wanted. So they picked up trades, mm. and they do really, really well at their yeah. trades now. But just probably out of that batch, only one person is left still. We ha still dealing with their old beefs. Mm -hmm. mm. Like it's recurring for them because yeah. they they went too deep. You too know deep what I'm into yeah. <laughs>